Hey, I'm Sam, and for Pride Month, I'm playing a couple of games that have transgender characters as a central part of the story. And today, that's a uh, visual novel on itch.io called Naomi. And it looks pretty. The art, I like the art style, which is, which was the main factor in deciding to play this one. Naomi was cornered, utterly trapped and absolutely doomed. <laughs> she could feel bile rising in her throat, her knees trembling and her eyes welling with tears. Hayden wasn't supposed to be here. He was too early. She was supposed to have a couple of hours to be by herself. She wasn't ready to go back to playing pretend. She wasn't ready. In no way was Naomi prepared to be seen. Oh no. Oh dear. No. He always shorted her name, ever since her parents had introduced her as Now. They hadn't meant to give her such a girly name when she was born. Overseas, Naomi was unisex. Is it? I always thought that was a girl's name. Here it was distinctly feminine. It was something that had delighted Naomi at first. She was completely and utterly paralyzed, her back to him. Naomi had been so proud of finding this dress online in a size that she hoped would fit her. She had been so impatient to try it on that she couldn't be damned to wait until it was after dark. Oh no. That had cost her. Naomi never got a chance to zip up the back of the dress, so she knew he could see her bra strap. Oh no! Her hair was far too short to hide it. She couldn't even drop the dress and pretend it was a joke. No one, will, no one went as far as wearing women's underwear for a joke. Right now, more than anything, she wanted to die. No. She would rather be dead than face the wrath of Hayden and whoever he told. She'd rather die by the hand of God than die by the hands of people who just hated her. Now, uh... He trailed off. He didn't know what to say. Of course he didn't. She could hear him stepping closer, closer, too close, too close. His hands... Uh, his hand touched her shoulder, sho her shoulder softly. She wanted to be comforted like he had comforted her so many times before, but he had never been privy to this. Whoops. She wanted to trust him with this as much as she trusted him with everything else, but oh god, she was too terrified. Well, he sounds like a good friend, so he might, he might be okay probably be okay let's say let's say you'll probably be okay far too terrified people change their personalities at the drop of a hat about people like her she'd seen it read about it heard the stories from other girls like her yeah now what's wrong she couldn't answer couldn't move couldn't breathe her heart was beating so fast it felt like it was going to burst she couldn't take this she couldn't take this panic. Her knees gave out, but before she could hit the ground, Hayden's arms caught her, holding her up before slowly, slowly letting her down. She finally dared to look at her friend. Oh, hey. You look like shit. Are you going to be sick? Should I get a bucket? Maybe. I don't know. I kind of feel like dying, honestly. She chuckled weakly, wishing the shaking would stop at least. Hayden gently rubbed her back, keeping his hand away from her bra. It felt intentional. You're not allowed to die, remember? I'm not allowed to die, you're not allowed to die, remember that? They've had some heavy conversations in the past. Of course she remembered. It was impossible not to remember finding him unconscious on his bedroom floor with a noose around his neck. Oh no. She knew he even felt bad about it. He hadn't wanted her to discover his body or anything. He just 
fell into a pit and couldn't take it. And Naomi coming over had slipped his mind. She didn't want him to feel bad though. She just wanted him to stay alive. They weren't even close then. They had homeroom together and they hung out once, maybe twice before that, usually with other people around. I remember. I said with more confidence than she probably did. Her voice was barely a whisper. Exhaustion was setting in. But maybe you won't think that way soon. Maybe you'll feel betrayed or something. Are you drunk? Naomi said nothing. She didn't drink. He knew that. She focused on cl clutching the top part of her dress in her hands, regretting how wrinkled it would probably be by the time she let go. If she let go. The dress is a big deal, isn't it? Mm-hmm. No, he stayed quiet, afraid to answer. I mean, it's not to me. I think we all cross-dress at some point in our lives. Now she was definitely going to throw up. So, it's okay? Do you want me to zip you up or something? Do you do this often? He kept rubbing her back. You can trust me now. Ah, oh, I'm doing it again. Sorry. Naomi pulled away from him, kneeling on the hard floor. Shut my door. Even if Hayden was angry, she'd rather her parents not see her like this. They wouldn't get it. Hayden obliged. The door shut with a soft click before he came back and sat on the floor a couple of steps from her. It's not cross-dressing, Hayden. Okay, so what is it? Naomi was silent for a long moment before speaking again. Me, I guess. That doesn't sound super convincing. I don't know how to explain it. Hayden closed his mouth, looking away. It's not cross-dressing. I'm not wearing clothes for the opposite gender or however you want to put it. She didn't know how to explain this when it was to people that didn't already get it. She didn't know where to begin and why she felt the way she felt or why her dresses made her feel like herself. Opposite was oversimplifying it. It wasn't right, but it was such a headache and this was already so terrifying she didn't want to turn this into a giant ramble on everything about her and everyone else. But... No. They were quiet again. Naomi's boldness taking a toll on her. She wasn't a bold person. She was terrified right now. and She was certain that was the only reason she was able to snap at her friend. The only reason she was able to cut him off mid-thought. I know what my body is and it's not a body I'm happy with. Flat chest, narrow hips, not even the slightest hint of curves. It's what I'm stuck with though and I just I try to wear things that make me feel more like me than anything else does. Hayden stared at the floor without moving. The longer he sat there the more anxious Naomi got but she didn't dare interrupt him when he was so close to understanding. When Hayden looked up again there wasn't a trace of anger on his face. So you're a girl is that what you're getting at? Yes with a dick. That's irrelevant. Hayden went quiet again. Yeah, it is. So you don't hate me? No. You're not going to hurt me? Oh, come on. What? Fuck no. Naomi smiled slightly, right as the bubbling in her stomach started again. She covered her mouth with her hand and gagged. his face. <laughs> Hayden grabbed the emergency bucket Naomi always had nearby. Oh, so this is a recurring problem. Once Hayden had gotten to know her, even just the slightest bit, he figured out that her anxiety went straight to her stomach and he was always prepared to get her somewhere where she could take care of things. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> he shoved the bucket in front of her and then stepped back when she threw up. Naomi kept the front of her dress out of the way, coughing when it was finally over but not daring to lift her head yet. Hayden pressed a napkin to her lips and she carefully took it, wiping away the bile and dropping it in the bucket. So are you going to zip up that dress or not? Uh, she thought about it. 
No, I'm gonna change, actually. Naomi took the moment to get up, grab her hoodie and pants, and dash into the bathroom. She shut the door behind her, carefully slipping out of her dress and folding it up. After a moment's hesitation, she slipped off her bra despite feeling naked without it. She didn't bother changing her underwear, she just pulled on her pants and her hoodie. When she stepped out of her bathroom with her dress in her arms, Hayden looked up at her. Oh, I'm sorry for coming over early, I should have asked. It's okay. Um, thanks for not freaking out. Well, we can't both be throwing up in buckets. You only have one. <laughs> Naomi laughed, carefully tucking a dress and bra away in an opaque plastic box. Opaque. Hey, now? Yeah? She slid the box under the bed to the furthest corner. Since her bed was a double and backed into a corner, it made getting the box out more trouble than it was worth for anyone else. You're... You're not open about the girl stuff, are you? No, my parents had kicked me out and living on the streets... Naomi shook her head. Yeah, that would be bad. He was quiet for a moment. In all the time I've known you, you've been a really anxious person that panics at the drop of a hat. That's hardly news, Hayden. He scowled. But I've never seen you as petrified as you were when I walked in this afternoon. For good reason. Is there anything I can do to, I don't know, make things easier for you? Better? You're one of my closest friends and I can't claim to understand what you're feeling, but I'd like it if I could do something to make you feel better. Or something. Naomi thought about it a moment, standing up and then sitting on her bed. First, don't tell anyone. Maybe you're understanding, but other people might hurt me. It's not uncommon. I can keep my mouth shut. Naomi frowned. Was he taking this seriously? She couldn't tell. Not anyone, not your mom, not the people you play Xbox with, not your dad, not God, not anyone. <laughs> don't write it anywhere, don't even think about it. Hayden's eyes were wide as he put up his hands in surrender. Not a soul, I won't even tell the ants that are invading my room. If you do, you'll have to kill them. <laughs> I'll cut off their heads. <laughs> no, we chuckled. Finally feeling like she was able to breathe again. He wouldn't tell. What would he gain anyway? He didn't like being involved in dramatic things. She took a deep breath, steadying herself, steadying herself before she continued. Okay, second. Would you be bothered if I dressed how I wanted around you? Oh, what? Well, no, it doesn't bother me. Naomi nodded. Lastly, can you call me Naomi? No matter where we are, I can do that. Anything else? No, thank you. Naomi's eyes were glazing over as she scrolled absentmindedly down the results of a fashion shoot done by one of the smaller businesses in the area. It wasn't so much the clothes that drew her in, but the fact that none of the models were typical model types. One of the girls was heavy set and pear shaped, another was incredibly thin, lanky limbed, and didn't have enough fat on her to give her curves of any sort. This model was built more like Naomi than any girl she'd ever seen, and while Naomi hid her body away under baggy clothes, the model wore whatever she pleased with confidence. She absolutely owned the space she occupied. The model's blog posts only served to highlight this. She was an angular, bony girl and simply did as she pleased. Naomi couldn't tell if she was jealous or inspired. She sat up a bit, enough to get a look at, ha at Hayden passed out on her floor under a blanket. He had a pillow, but he had abandoned it sometime during the night, using his arms instead. She couldn't understand how that was comfortable, but it didn't matter. It had been a couple of weeks since he had walked in on her, dress in hand, and she hadn't touched her clothes since. Hayden hadn't asked about them either. She would have thought that he forgot about it entirely if it weren't for the fact that he hadn't called her now since then. The way he said her name, Naomi, didn't sound at all like the way her parents said it, Naomi. 
trying to remember how I've been saying it now. I don't know. But she didn't mind that at all. It was the same name in the end. The way he said it was just more feminized. She liked that. A couple of classmates had asked why Hayden said a name that way, and all he did was shrug. I don't know, I think it's a nice name. Nothing more. Her eyes trailing over the model's pictures again. Naomi. Naomi. Yeah. Wondered how the model got to the point of owning her space. Was she ever someone that looked in the mirror and cried over what she saw? Or was she one of those people just born confident? Riss. The model's name was Riss. That was all. There were no biographical comments, no mention of gender. Maybe Naomi would had been wrong in even thinking that Riss was a girl. She wore bright, colourful things and beautiful, multi-layered skirts with high heels. But maybe Briss was a girl like Naomi, or not a girl in any sense. It was a comforting thought to think that maybe this gorgeous, confident model was more like Naomi than normal girls were. Naomi was probably wrong, but she held on to the comforting thought as she got out of bed, careful not to make much noise. Hayden, hey, wake up. Hayden groaned, blinking and squinting Naomi blarily. Huh? Just wake up. You can go back to, back to sleep later. <laughs> it's six in the morning. It's three. Same difference. Please? Hayden flopped face first onto his pillow for a moment before sitting up again, groping around for his glasses and putting them on. Naomi pulled her laptop off the bed, laying on the floor beside him and stealing his previously discarded pillow for her elbows. She scrolled up to the top of Riss's blog and show slowly made her way down. Look at her, Hayden. She's pretty, what about her? Look at her build, she's built like me. Do you think she's trans or something? No, no, that's not the point. I mean, she might be, I don't know. It doesn't matter though. Now what's this about? The way she dressed, she just, she just owns it. She doesn't get caught up in the fact that she doesn't have curves and that most pretty stuff is built for curves. I wish I could do that. Hayden was quiet for a long moment, his eyes glued to the pictures on Naomi's laptop. I don't know, I think you could pull it off. No. Yeah. Naomi didn't reply for a long moment. She looked Riss over more and more, studying the sharp angles of her body. Riss started somewhere before becoming this godly being of a model. No. Naomi got on the floor, feeling around under her bed until she found her plastic box in the far corner. She slowly slid it out and opened it, only pausing to listen, mostly out of habit. She made sure the house was still silent before pulling out her dress and everything else she needed. Hayden shifted behind her. What are you doing? Just hold on. She went past Hayden into her bathroom, stripping out of her pyjamas and looking at herself in the mirror. Naomi did still didn't like it much, but she tried not to dwell on, her, on the parts that she hated. She touched her cheeks, running her fingers across her chin. As far as her face went, she'd gotten lucky. It wasn't quite as soft as she would have liked, but it wasn't bony and harsh. Her face leaned more towards what she thought of as androgynous than purely masculine. Her facial hair didn't grow terribly fast either, she shaved religiously though making sure it never had a chance to get anywhere. Her face was definitely one of her stronger points. Naomi's shoulders were more narrow than they were broad, though she had to be careful. A lot of shirts, when she put them on, only showed how she wasn't really built for them. Her hands were okay, not rough or anything. Her fingers were long and bony. The nails were short, chewed down to the quick. Could be worse though. She stopped for now, picking her bra up and putting it on, hooking from the front and then putting her arms through the straps. She picked up her inserts, sliding them carefully into the cups and adjusting until they looked and felt right. Under clothes, they looked real enough to her. Naomi pulled on her underwear, avoiding looking down until they were on securely. Finally, she picked up the dress for the second time since she had bought it. She put it on, tying the straps behind her neck and gathering them back where it was loose. She realized she honestly couldn't sit the thing by herself. It looked good on her though. Felt right. She felt cute. Aww. Naomi came out of the bathroom, fearing every second that this burst of confidence would just vanish, leaving her cold, empty and alone. Aww. 
No matter how kind Hayden had been, he could always change his mind and scorn her. She watched Hayden's attention shift from the laptop to her, eyes widening a bit. Hey, I need your help with something. Uh, uh-huh. He rubbed at his face for a moment before turning his attention back to Naomi. His eyes wandered up and down and he smiled a bit. You look pretty. Ah, they're both blushing. Naomi refused to respond to that, feeling her face warm. She couldn't lose sight of a simple little goal. Can you zip me up? The end! Oh, That was adorable! Built by team after effect. Etc, etc. Yo. Yeah, that was cute. That was very cute. And the other ones, I've noticed a lot of the, or a lot, the visual novels about trans characters tend to be the coming out kind or just about gender dysphoria specifically. And I try to not play just those because, you know, variation is good. You want to see characters like yourself just being themselves in a story once in a while as well. But this one looked cute and I'm glad it was really cute and it had a good-ish ending. At least she's got a friend for support, which is fantastic because without friends and people to support you, eh, yeah, especially since she's already struggling with anxiety and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope she has a good life, basically. Anyway, Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that and see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>